Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Gabriel Asylum Foundation's live series, Consulting Without Borders Perspectives, in which we feature prominent international consultants and experts doing work related to global challenges. Today is June 1st, the first day of summer, and I hope you're enjoying it wherever you are now. Please let me know in comments where you are tuning from. My name is Victoria Olskaya, and I'm broadcasting today from Florida. I am president of Gabriel Asylum Foundation, a US-based but working internationally nonprofit organization which has a mission to create connections, promote excellence, and build a sustainable future for all. In line uh, with our mission, we are having a conversation today about green consulting in Central Asia. Those of you who watched our previous episodes already know that this is not the first time that we're talking about green consulting, green research, green solutions. And this is also not the first time that we're talking about Central Asia. Uh, while we certainly have interest in other regions uh, of this world, Central Asia is especially dear for our foundation because this is where Gabriel Al Salim, uh, whose name we have, lived and worked for many years, and where he made a significant contrib contribution to establishing a consulting industry. And we are very proud that there are so many uh, green initiatives in Central Asia and in Kyrgyz Republic, as this is the country of our guest speaker today, Nurzat Abdurasulova, who is founder and president of Unison Group, a professional think tank and a civil society organization specializing in sustainable solutions, energy governance, renewable energy, green technology and finance, climate change mitigation and water in the environment. Norzat will be able to tell us a lot more today about this amazing work that she and her company are doing in her country and in the in the region. You can also post your questions for Nurzat in the comments using uh, the channel that you are watching our broadcast on, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, just please post them in the comments your questions or anything, any ideas or suggestions, and we'll be happy to, uh, to answer them. So I would like to welcome Nurzat. Hello. Hello, Nurzat. Welcome and thank you for joining us today as our guest speaker. Uh, well, before we begin, I also wanted to say that I know that your organization, Unison Group, was established in Bishkek, the Kyrgyz Republic, in 2002. So this year, uh, the organization is celebrating its 20th anniversary, right? And in Isn't fact, that to, uh, you know, yesterday was the, the birthday, right? That was the date. So excellent work. Well done. Please uh, tell us more about it. Yes. Um, hello. Thank you, Victoria, for this opportunity to uh participate in the Gabriel Salam um, streamline and share our work in Kyrgyzstan and in generally speak about the Central Asia activities on the green growth. Um, yes, uh, the Unison uh, Unison group is the uh, organization based in Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan uh, in, uh, and this is the uh, country which is uh, a uh, mountainous country where is 90% uh, of the uh, territory is the high mountains and then uh, we have uh, uh, also uh, quite uh, a lot of um, uh, opportunities and challenges related environmental issues, energy and renewables and that's why it was very important for me that I started this work in 2002. My background is uh, environmentalist. I finished the natural resource management uh, bachelor degree in Kyrgyzstan, and then I made my master in Slovakia uh, in 2000 uh, uh, about the environmental policy. But uh, since um, uh, I came back to Bishkek, uh, to Kyrgyzstan, 
uh, I started thinking about that what I could do to my country, what, what, how I can apply my knowledge and uh, my experience, which I gained. And I have been also very much uh, um, excited that uh, with my uh, friends, uh, what they have seen in other countries they are doing. Uh, so I, I started uh, um, uh, some volunteer initiatives. Uh, and then in 2002, I already applied uh, officially for the registration of the civil society organization Unison, uh, who will be working with the youth and um, also with the public and government uh, regarding the um, environmental protection issues and water issues uh, uh, and uh, about the renewable energy and air quality improvement that was the actually the a lot of topics which i learned from the university and from my uh, um, uh, internships and uh, that's what i wanted to check, uh, apply into the my country uh, in 20 years ago the energy uh, or the environmental topics wasn't is in the priority of course it was the just after the collapse of the soviet union 10 years passed but uh, kyrgyzstan was still um, uh, struggling with the institutionalization, with the political some st stabilities. So uh, I think that the, we were the, one of the first civil society organizations actually they established and starting to speaking rega regarding the environmental issues in Kyrgyzstan. Um, and uh, in 2002, 31st of May, I received the certification of the official registration and we started counting that day as a birthday of the organization. And yes, yesterday we celebrated our 20th birthday. So uh, now uh, after 20 years, I can say that uh, Unison is not only the civil society organization, but it has also the consulting arm. We are yeah, becoming Unison Group. It's an alliance of the uh, organizations who is working as on civil society and the public uh, issues, but also uh, professional consulting who's working with the donors, financial institutions, government, and also for the private sector. Okay, I think it would be very appropriate right now to show the photograph of your wonderful team, right? Is this the most the most recent photograph? Yeah, um, it is uh, one of the most recent photographs when we have been um, uh, organizing the one of the our big events within that one of the projects in Kyrgyzstan and. Uh, we uh, use organized the uh, excellency energy efficiency excellency awards uh, just to price the private sector and then also household uh, organ people who is actually then introducing a uh, good um, energy efficiency and resource efficiency practices in their life so uh, this is the photo when we made this great celebration with the awarding. We invited our donors, like European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, European Union, and many others. And there was a lot of testimonials from the private sector people when they came and they share experience and they also prized what they actually achieved through the applying such a green uh, technology and green practices. And I think that uh, this is the one of the impacts what we are trying to do in in in, the, in Kyrgyzstan locally. Well, speaking about the awards, uh, I would like to add. I know this was a different award, but in fact, in 2020, Unison Group uh, won the Gabriel Salem uh, Foundation's International Award for Excellence in Consulting in the category Green Economy and Environmental Protection, and that was a great achievement. And at that time. We could still travel easily, so we all met in Bali, Indonesia. We had a, uh, a conference and then the award ceremony. And this is a photograph of Nurzat, who is one of the speakers who, uh, who gave the award. And the fact uh, you are there with your colleague also from the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, and um, so it was, it, was, it was really great. So congratulations again. Thank you. And I also wanted to greet uh, those who are joining us. Uh, we have Anya Al Salim joining us from the Netherlands, Gulnura As Askarbekova saying hello, and then Gulsu Mahtaberdiva, uh, one of the directors of our foundation, is also joining us from Kazakhstan slash Turkey. 
<laughs> so anybody else who is out there, please post where you are tuning in from. And uh, uh, we'll just, uh, Nurzat, I know that under your leadership in 20 years, your organization has done over 40 successful projects. And that's quite a significant you know, number uh, of, of projects. Can you maybe talk a little bit more about what kind of projects and why those specific projects and what was the impact for your country and possibly for all of Central Asia? Um, yes, Unison is um, uh, working in the different uh, levels. So we do the analytics uh, when we actually uh, apply expert uh, analysis uh, into the sectors. So we will work with the construction sector regarding the green buildings, uh, uh, about the energy efficiency, resource efficiency, applying the renewables in the building sector, development of the uh, improvement of the uh, standards. Uh, and uh, then we also work uh, quite uh, closely with the government uh, institutions regarding the policy. So we do the policy dialogue related um, energy efficiency, and uh, I can proudly say that Un Unison was <clears throat> driver of the uh, development of the this new sector in Kyrgyzstan since 2009. In 2009, we became the um, uh, consultant uh, for the e European Bank of Reconstruction Development, which was supported the project technical consultancy for the government. And <clears throat> within that uh, work, uh, we developed the first time in the uh, in the uh, in Kyrgyzstan history the primary new law about energy performance of buildings and this was the, actually the situation that when we made that this uh, analysis first we find out that almost 50 percent of the primary energy in Kyrgyzstan is the um, uh, is go, goes to the is the goes to the building sector and building sector is quite quite high energy intensive that we lost quite a lot and uh, uh, like up to the 60 percent of the energy was wasting and that's why uh, we uh, uh, with the government uh, kyrgyz government together uh, there was the development of the uh, regulation framework about the, how to save the energy how to improve the performance of buildings and a law was adopted in 2011 and after that we have been continuing working with this uh, policy dialogue when we supported uh, also development of the all uh, sub laws and uh, uh, construction norms and standards in order to enforce the law uh, performance so this means that uh, now uh, energy uh, performance law in kyrgyzstan requires uh, um, minimum energy requirements for the buildings which is the class b and also uh, it, it, it uh, it's also um, uh, Kyrgyzstan started this. We established the independent energy auditors who will be doing the energy certification of buildings. Uh, we are doing the, quite a lot of uh, capacity building activities uh, uh, and um, in, to increase the uh, uh, capacity of the architects, construction companies, project institutes, also government officials related uh, this uh, energy performance uh, of buildings uh, law and its uh, implementation. Uh, we just also re recently finished the development of the establishment of the uh, online energy register for energy certification of buildings and uh, also independent experts. And this is the also the great thing that actually that there is now existing the uh, the pre like um, framework. There is the uh, instruments. There is uh, uh, actually the uh, uh, um, independent uh, expert uh, experts who can support this work and um, also uh, was the important that uh, there is existing um, financial instruments for this and this was the another project which we also have been involved uh, this is um, Kyrgyz sustainable financing facility program uh, KIRSEF which is the $55 million uh, portfolio credit line program supported by EBRD and then EU. Uh, 
And uh, uh, actually, for the um, households and private sector, for the businesses who would like to apply energy saving, resource efficiency measures, and who apply through the local banks for the financing, this um, project is supported by the EU grants. And the uh, EU also supported uh, our TC support, uh, technical consultation support uh, for the final beneficiaries when we provided uh, free consultations for them. And that was the also, uh, I think, that great experience for us and for the Kyrgyzstan as well, because it brought uh, more than uh, 3,500 project implementation over the uh, like eight years. Uh, um, almost $55 million has been invested for the energy and resource efficiency. Uh, we achieved um, uh, uh, we, our impact also went to, into the uh, scene that we uh, uh, supported the energy saving, we supported the CO2 cuts, uh, and we also helped the businesses to grow into the uh, modernization, into the um, high uh, competitiveness um, and it was the also a great uh, awareness raising among the um, households uh, because uh, it was uh, all about uh, how to insulate their houses, how to improve their heating stoves and uh, how to uh, efficiently uh, switch to the other more clean energy sources like renewable energy, solar collectors for the heat pumps. And we also very closely worked with the suppliers market in order to um, make sure that, that all this uh, modern and advanced green technologies and knowledge is there. Uh, and uh, uh, I can proudly say that uh, since we started working from the scratch, from the zero, when we were explaining what is the energy efficiency and why we need to do, uh, for now, there is a great um, awareness regarding the energy efficiency applications about the green technologies. And then market of the renewable and green technologies is uh, grown to, for the 30%. Um, and this is, also, yeah. yeah. So this is very amazing, uh, amazing work. And I was just going to say, of course, it's uh, quite fascinating that you were able to have uh, special legislation about the, the, the buildings and how to save energy, right? Uh, but uh, the question is how to implement it. That's always a little bit more, you know, challenging. And I was going to say, uh, so you were able to actually reach uh, as far as individual households, right? And how they can improve their uh you know their housing and as well as uh, some business organizations so do, uh, do they have to now uh, follow a certain rules or is this still pretty much like a, a gray zone um it's uh, actually that uh, you're right that it's a big challenge uh, mm -hmm. when there is a good laws but implementation is always in the in the delay and especially if you are starting the absolutely new sector, which is uh, nobody understands in the beginning. And you know that we have this um, uh, maybe Soviet uh, time um, uh, approach and mentality that energy was always for free or almost for free. And there was a really little understanding why the energy savings actually the good and uh, especially in Kyrgyzstan, we have a most maybe cheapest electricity tariffs in the world. Mm. And uh, this is also actually that doesn't make an incentive for, for people for going that green um, for for reducing the energy uh, uh, wasting and also uh, it doesn't bring maybe that much a cost saving. So it was a really big challenge actually to how to um, prioritize energy saving, energy efficiency, and why people should do this, you know. Uh, but uh, in one hand, that uh, we could actually uh, push them, there is an establishment of this legislation framework. And secondly, through the awareness raising and that good uh, consultations, we explain people and also government that um, energy saving still brings a lot of the benefits from the point of view of, for example, ecological issues, because Bishkek is, has uh, one of the problems is the air quality. And then uh, it's during the heating period, we might uh, get into the top uh, uh, most polluted cities in the world. And uh, one of the uh, main uh, reasons of the, this uh, bad air quality is the, actually the uh, 
uh, coal heating stoves and badly insulated houses because Kyrgyzstan is the mountainous country and it's a continental climate. So in the winter time, we have a, a quite um, high minus temperatures uh, up to the 20, 25, and people need to heat, heat. And this heating season could go up to the uh, four or five months per year. And that also makes there quite a lot of problem on the air quality. And because of that, also these buildings are badly insulated, there is a problem of the um, uh, heat losses. And then it means like uh, there is an underheated uh, uh, areas and then uh, also comfort of the uh, being in the building is very low. Uh, and uh, there is a health issues and indoor quality and other things. So this is the all was the like um, side effects which we explained uh, why the energy efficiency is also good for to do. And still uh, because of the, this high energy losses, if we apply the and for example, thermal insulation of the buildings and fuel switches, still, even though with the low tariffs, it's still very economically valuable because uh, energy loss is so high that uh, after the, um, this improvement, we notice that the payback period of such a measures in average, it goes about five years. So people were very happy and then they were applying and they uh, have been also pretty much appreciating the approach we applied because we have been explaining in very simple way what is the like uh, technologies how it can be applied how to choose actually the uh, uh, like viable uh, uh, technology and what is the also bankable projects so from this point of view we also worked with the local banks uh, in in order to develop uh, green products which will be helping to people and people. Uh, People were applying for this loan in order to uh, take this money. This was about the access to their finance in order to implement these measures. And I think that this type of the complex approach actually made possible that energy efficiency start working in Kyrgyzstan. And it became the really uh, one of the uh, highly wanted uh, product in the market. Because now uh, I can probably say that most of the our final, local financial institutions, they want such a product. They, they are developing it. They uh, provide the uh, green uh, financing products for the house insulation, for the building improvement, uh, for the switching the, uh, like to the solar collectors, so PVs and heat pumps. Uh, they, support, they start to support the electro bikes and the cars. And uh, th this is the all that I think that impact. And when we were talking about the green technology and then green economy development. Yeah. When you're speaking about green finance and that the financial institutions have uh, now these instruments uh, that people can use, right, or organizations can use. Uh, I'm just wondering, but those uh, financial institutions are mostly private, right? So is there any, uh, you know, government support for some of these uh, green solutions like for example in the united states the solar panels i have you know solar panels when i had them installed i, I was able to uh, write off certain amount actually almost all of the cost not all like you know one third of the cost of the panels uh from the taxes so there is like a, a strong incentive uh but from the government and the state uh, to well to support people in installing the solar panels it's, so it's not only great for the environment but it's also like you actually feel certain benefits is is there something you know like this in uh, you know Kyrgyzstan yeah, I think that it was first uh, for, was a pilot example from the donor community so it's, it was EBR the EU project which was very successful I would say because uh, it was the pilot piloted in 2013 with the 20 million dollars but it was successful and very fastly dispersed that they say added another 35 million to continue this project and now we are currently finishing the second phase of this uh, program KSF, and then the third one is going to be opened this year for another 50 million dollars and this is the, i think that uh, 
uh, this is the uh, uh, example of the, how successful was the program. Uh, for the government, uh, so uh, government, uh, uh, they really appreciate that and they see that actually there's such a program is, 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 is a need and then people want them and they wanted to support it. So, so far, doesn't it doesn't exist, especially such a like uh, maybe financial programs for the green uh, activities. But uh, in uh, um, recently, uh, govern, uh, government uh, uh, adopted the new tax code of Kyrgyzstan. And this within the new tax code, uh, there is uh, uh, actually the VAT exemption uh, for the products for the green uh, energy and uh, uh, also energy and resource efficiency products. Uh, so if the uh, uh, someone is uh, uh, bringing uh, importing the such a products, they can first of all get the tax uh, exemption. Uh, I mean the custom fee exemption. And then also they don't have to pay the VAT, and I think that this is the also a really great support to make to to uh, um, uh, enhance the green technology market in the in Kyrgyzstan, and also making this uh, uh, product uh, prices more available for the uh, general public. Uh, so um, there was um, uh, and. Um, when I was talking about the, this um, program, Kirsev, this was, yes, it was the private banks in the first, because it was uh, like commercial banks of Kyrgyzstan, but now government, of course, government has the also public government uh, um, banks, and they would like to also work on this kind of the products, uh, especially for the vulnerable group of people. Okay, well, uh, Gulsum actually had this this question whether the program was successful or is successful and whether this program is available for individuals. So you are already you've already answered this that it's it's it seems like a, a successful yeah. program, right? And uh, it was, it's, 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 yeah, it is successful. Like I said, that it is more than three thousand five hundred projects we implemented. Right within this program right. and uh, it is uh, has uh, two windows so one is the uh, supporting the you know, businesses so it's uh, 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 companies and then uh, would like to apply this uh, kind of measures in the active in their enterprises and also who would like to install for example renewable energy sources and another one another window is the, for the windows so residential sector who's living in the multi-apartment houses and also in the in the dwelling level family houses this is amazing, amazing work. I'm just wondering, uh, well, I know all this is done within the Kyrgyz Republic. Do you uh, share your experience with some other countries in Central Asia, like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan? I'm sure they probably have some initiatives of their own, and I know they do. Uh, so certainly in Kazakhstan, I know of uh, many, but uh, this is your experience is quite unique so did you share it or do they come to you for advice <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah i think that um, uh, we are quite uh, uh, open and well known to share our experience because um, kirsev is um, uh, one of the uh, projects which was um, which has shown actually the different approaches and how to make the, this kind of the project successful, even in the place where it's the low tariffs and maybe not pretty much economic incentive and low awareness. So we uh, participate in many different uh, um, Central Asian level uh, uh, initiatives and uh, conferences and forums, and we always share. And then there is, of course, uh, some other um, uh, events when we actually they also uh, invite people in Kyrgyzstan and share yes there, there is a lot of uh, exchange in the Central Asian level okay oh that's great well Gulsum uh, is still very much interested in uh, the finance the green finance and she's asking uh, do the banks require uh, any collateral uh, when I guess they they provide the, the financing for the green mm -hmm. uh, initiatives Yes, of course, uh, there is a special banking procedure. So we just make sure that there is a bankable project and then bank uh, banks makes their own uh, uh, banking procedure regarding the uh, um, 
like giving the loan, you know, so there is a collateral, there is a, uh, there is a like payment schedule and then uh, etc. Uh, but uh, while banking, but bankers are doing their financial uh, uh, procedures, we support them regarding the as a technical consultant regarding the all the technologies which will be applied and the measures. We make sure that uh, these measures are um, uh, uh, valuable and it will bring the, the the results regarding the energy saving and it will be durable materials. And then, uh, so it's really good for, it's really good to, for the, for example, for the financial institutions because they don't have this capacity of the technical side. So that's what we can provide. And it's also good for the sub, like borrowers, you know, for the final beneficiaries because they don't have also the technical uh, knowledge and that's what we can also explain them that where to get these technologies how it can be applied how it can be installed and uh, also uh, making the uh, their capacity building and working with the suppliers um oh, yeah uh, and i just wanted to say uh oh. there was a, a thank you from uh Viktor Gaziev, he is thanking you for sharing your experience. And also we had a question uh, from Anya Al-Salim. She is also thanking you for sharing your experience and uh, saying you're doing amazing work and asking if you could please tell us a little bit more about the projects and initiatives you have planned for the future. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Anya. Uh, we have uh, uh, working, uh, like uh, I strongly made the example regarding what we are doing on the energy efficiency and financing, but we are also very much active on the climate change activities and then also capacity building of the civil society organizations. Uh, so within that, uh, we have been also pretty much actively working on the uh, national climate policy climate change policy um, enhancement, and we are working on that very closely with the government, as well as also with society organizations. In 2002, uh, um, UNISON uh, established the uh, climate network of Kyrgyzstan, uniting all the like environmental organizations of Kyrgyzstan into the network who is actually the promoting and who is working on the climate adaptation and mitigation issues. And uh, since um, we were active uh, uh, in 2019, we also decided that, that this activity, we should uh, grow into the like uh, more broader issues, not only about the climate change, even the climate change is multidisciplinary and uh, goes uh, for many sectors. Uh, we uh, decided to make it also uh, more uh, on the green economy uh, issues um, and green economy uh activities development in kyrgyzstan because kyrgyzstan also uh declared that uh, we would like to build the green economy and the research to the uh, official uh, green economy concept that uh, um, adopted and the, the program is established um so uh uh, we, um, in 2019, uh, the Climate Network of Kyrgyzstan became the Association of the Green Alliance of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, it uh, unites more than uh, 60 organizations nowadays. And it uh, includes um, uh, NGOs, uh, academic sector, and also businesses who's working on the climate uh, and the green economy issues. And um, on the plans for the future, uh, Unison would like to continue working and being the uh, in the leadership uh, on the sustainable uh, uh, development uh, goals uh, because uh, uh, our activities is actually the supporting the I think that all the seventeen goals of the sustainable development um, and it is related the um, development of the first of all human capacity. Because I think that Kyrgyzstan has an amazing uh, professionals and human capacity and the young people, very dynamic young people who thinks that uh, who who is the actually the pretty much concerned about the environmental issues. And Kyrgyzstan has also the quite a good momentum now to turn into the total green energy, maybe when even 100% uh, renewable energy. Uh, and um, 
uh, also being efficient on the energy and resources water use uses and also uh, providing the uh, strong professionals for the region uh, uh, more than uh, 50 per almost 50 percent of the population in kyrgyzstan is the young people and uh, we think that uh, this is actually the great potential uh, to um, work on their uh, education capacity building uh, that's why we do the also a lot uh, uh, in our organization organizing that different trainings workshops and, uh, and internship activities for the for the young people and also for the involving the new colleagues there um, in our future plans also we would like to establish the professional unions uh, with the, for example, working uh, in the energy efficiency of buildings, for example, uh, from the people from the architect bureaus, uh, uh, from uh, project institutes, engineers. Uh, and uh, I think that, that that's also the very important that the, all the building, uh, I mean, all the uh, activities becoming on the design level is already efficient. And uh, uh, we would like to continue working on the development of the green products. We hope to continue working on our green financing projects, development of the new things like uh, green bonds for Kyrgyzstan, uh, and uh, also um, continuing to building the, this uh, our uh, regional, I mean, in Kyrgyzstan, other provinces um, offices, in order to bring this information to the broader um, um, uh, level of the people in uh, Kyrgyz language. Because uh, in Kyrgyzstan, 60% of the population live in the rural areas. And uh, there is uh, also quite a lot of challenges because of the climate change for these people. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, also about, uh, for example, water shortcut. Climate is changing and Kyrgyzstan is also having less and less snow in the winters and less and less uh, um, uh, um, like uh, water uh, in our rivers. And this is the really uh, very difficult for us because Kyrgyzstan is quite uh, highly dependent on the water. 90% uh, of our energy generation comes from the hydropower resources. And our hydropower uh, reservoirs actually that is the, uh, on, not only the uh, water generation units, but it's also the water for the water storage because Kyrgyzstan is a mountain country, upstream country, also keep the water for the summer irrigation for our neighbors like Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. And from this point of view, um, uh, water saving, uh, like introducing new method of the agriculturing, like drip irrigation or like um, summer uh, warm houses and other things of the, doing the agriculture, is also important and that's why uh, we also work with the uh, local communities regarding their uh, sustainable practices on the community level uh, because of kyrgyzstan kyrgyz people in the uh, like the original it is the nomads we uh, our uh, uh, like economic activities in the rural places is more mostly about the cattle breeding and it's all about the pastures you know so that's why it's uh, also about that how this kind of practices can change or how it can be more efficient and because we cannot continue with the climate change situation in the as, a, as, a, as usual we have done for many years but on the other hand also it's about to remembering what was the our ancestors doing what kind of like sustainable practices they have how this traditional knowledge can be applied in nowadays so there is a, a lot of exciting work which we are doing and uh, I think that uh, this is the uh, one of the, our future plans that we would like to uh, to bring all this knowledge into the new level and continue to building the strong civil society and community organizations and sharing our knowledge and being there maybe bridge uh, between the like uh, best uh, example uh, knowledge from the uh, developed countries to our country. Uh, uh, and adapting it and uh, making the impact. This is amazing because when we talk about uh, green technologies and innovations, we we you know normally think about it as something 
new that of course is coming with our age and it's it's true in a way because uh, of course a lot of damage to, to this planet is happening you know, right now because of all the other technologies and uh, industries and so on but it's so interesting that you're actually looking back in time to your ancestors and how they uh, lived right and, tr and and trying that to learn actually from them and to bring that to the modern day this is this is really a fascinating and that's what Anya is actually uh, also saying she says this is all sounds it's all sounds amazing especially integrating a traditional knowledge <laughs> thank you uh, you also mentioned uh, a few times that uh, Kyrgyzstan Kyrgyz Republic uh, has a uh, a, a big share of, of of the young population, so a lot of, of young people. Uh, and uh, how how is the, the the education, the environmental education, doing? I'm pretty sure that you have some initiatives as well, or you know of something that's happening. Because in order for for you and for all of us to progress, we have to educate our you know young people how to live and what uh, to do to to stay on this planet mm -hmm. so yeah education uh, thank you very much well uh, young people education is very important and especially i think that uh, for this age it's very important that when there is a like a good uh, organization who can also show the, a lot of uh, uh, example and then experience here um, that's why we think that uh, it's very important to build uh, such a youth networks as well as um, uh, um, discussions and then different platform where you can actually youth can express their vision and also show their activist activism. Uh, for that, uh, we have been also organizing uh, um, the first. Uh, Use climate change conference in Kyrgyzstan, uh, where uh, we wanted to involve the youth into the climate change uh, mitigation and climate change adaptation issues. We want to, to explain them what's going on, and also we want to show them how much, uh, how, like what kind of organizations exist and then what kind of activities they are doing. And it was an amazing experience because when we announced such a such a forum where we want to involve the youth. We had a huge amount of applications. So many people wanted to participate. It was not only the like university students, but it was the, also even the high school um, students from their schools. And then uh, we were like really amazed about their all like interest and activism in, into the environmental issues. Uh, unfortunately, there is not much uh, things uh, exist regarding the like. But we have uh, quite many universities uh, also. Uh, in Kyrgyzstan, and then uh, several of them, uh, of, of course, they have uh, already the faculty of the environmental um, uh, related uh, studies. Um, and uh, there may be one of the things uh, of you know, in Kyrgyzstan might be that uh, about the employment after the graduation, because we have a small country and maybe we don't have that much like um, po po like job places for the environmentalists who will be graduating from the university. But this is the, also about the green job development, you know. It's all about the also like government policy. It's all about the speaking about the environmental issues. It's all about the protecting and then it's all about the, um, prioritizing this. And because of the civil society organization, my, my colleagues, uh, including from the Green Alliance, uh, they activate the um, uh, issues of the environmental, um, I mean, the environmental protection topic is becoming the quite high in the agenda. Uh, because uh, my colleagues also does great job regarding the, for example, air quality. Uh, they do a great job about the biodiversity protection. They do a the great job about the green transport, about the traditional knowledge, about energy, uh, uh, about um, climate change. And this, uh, because of the last year's development of the social media, it's becoming more easier now to deliver these messages to the to the public, uh, and I'm really uh, now uh, happy to see that how many like young organizations also uh, if you, like established, and they are becoming more and more uh, creative and active, providing this information in very different ways, including in uh, Kyrgyz language. 
And um, so I think that um, uh, education maybe is not, uh, it's in our modern world, it can be the uh, very different way. Uh, it's not all about, about the school education or maybe the university education. It's all about now also getting the like uh, information and self-educating in different resources. And being and having the internet and also um, um, got uh, less, <laughs> we have a freedom of speech. I think that we are to the free to speak about and getting the actually access to different information. So um, that's uh, what we are um, uh, uh, trying to push that uh, education can be um, in uh, also on the different uh, training level. Uh, like uh, and this kind of platforms where the youth can exchange and uh, like organizing also youth hackathons in Kyrgyzstan is developing uh, also like um, uh, different use um, um, discussion clubs that's uh, I think that uh, uh, will grow I hope okay yeah, so I, as I understand, well, there was a question then about uh, the some environmental education in schools, and uh, there is there is not a set curriculum yet, right? Uh, but uh, there are the, a lot of initiatives on other levels. Yeah, maybe not on the school level, right? Like it doesn't call the ecology, but in the universities we have already like bachelor degree faculties and also for the master on the green economy and then also on the ecology. Yeah, well, I, I personally think it would, would certainly help a lot uh, and it would be great uh, if there is some environmental education uh, already in school, starting with, with mm -hmm. the small kids, because that's when they get most of their knowledge and understanding. And uh, if they already know from early ages how important uh, it is to yeah. save, save the environment, that would certainly pay off in the future. It's not yeah. obligatory yet, but there is, of course, some uh, like okay. elective, elective courses exist, but it's not. Uh, but I completely agree with you. I think that that's what way we, we should start, even from the kindergarten level. Right, right. Yeah, well, that would be a, a huge, huge work, but, but so important. Mm -hmm. Well, we have another question from uh, Altenai Jusupova, and she's asking, uh, well, she's also uh, thanking you for a huge contribution to the development uh, of the green economy in Kyrgyzstan, how do you access, how do you uh, assess the current level of development of green technologies in Kyrgyzstan? What problems are of particular concern to you and our region? Thank you very much, Altenai, for this this great question. Thank you for you know, joining us and watching us today. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Um, a green technology market is still need to be the quite a lot developed in Kyrgyzstan, especially I think that we need to uh, more to have a more like local providers and local uh, producers because uh, all the technologies so far in Kyrgyzstan they are all um, imported, and this is also makes actually the huge dependency, and um, because of also these modern technologies is. Uh, accessible only in the capital, like in Bishkek, in the regions, there is not so many people apply it. And there is also like kind of um, maybe a lack of uh, lack of knowledge and trust because they think that all oh, what I will have will happen if I, it will be like broken, how I can actually the, make it sure that the, it will be working properly. Can I really trust that? And that's why it's uh, always important, uh, I think that uh, to provide that this technical consultation and also the provide like uh, suppliers of these technologies is uh, really uh, working uh, hard in order to uh, explain and to making uh, solid um, uh, service services available, including into the regions. So currently, green technology development uh, in Kyrgyzstan uh, is, um, uh, I would say. Uh, not on the very maybe advanced level, I would say, but it's it, it, in, uh, this is on what we need to do, and that's why is uh, we have been working also with the government on this type of the incentives like tax codes uh, and uh, tax exemptions and giving the pro some priorities for this, and I hope that in the future there will be also the maybe the public procurement services where the green technologies will be given the priority. And this type of the things, I think that it's also the good instruments 
to develop this market in Kyrgyzstan and including the local producers. Thank you so much for answering the question. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to ask also, uh, what do you see as the main challenges or perhaps obstacles uh, in your work or in general in, in work uh, aimed at uh, developing uh, all these green initiatives and protecting the environment? There is a lot done, a lot that is done in Kyrgyzstan, that's obvious, and there is a lot of uh, support, including the government, but what other the obstacles uh, is it like just the, pe the people's mentality perhaps or maybe something that the government is not doing yet or yeah what what would you say uh is the, the main challenge uh, yes even it sounds the great uh, and uh, like working well i wouldn't say that uh, there is uh, much things to do and maybe our success, uh, our organization success is all because of our high commitment. And the thing is that we like what we are doing pretty much. And uh, also uh, one of the, I think the challenges is the, actually about the sustainability, about the access to the resources, fundings, and to make sure that you keep the agenda, you know, for the like for the organization, so you don't switch for the things in order to be just be able to to to, to survive. And uh, uh, green uh, agenda, uh, it's um, the thing is that good is maybe that uh, now the green agenda is in the worldwide because of the climate change, and that's why we actually the, keep this agenda in order to bring it to the policy level and then in the Kyrgyzstan is a part of the sustainable development goals. So uh, then uh, it's very, uh, it's not uh, maybe, it's not it's not easy, I would say. So uh, there is, um, uh, in Kyrgyzstan uh, con conditions, there is, they have been for last years quite a high political volatility. You know, we have the change a lot of times, the governments, we uh, uh, like uh, had the, uh, uh, like a uh, few times the revolutions uh, uh, also because of our uh, good geopolitical uh, um, like, uh, location of the country we dependent with this uh, big countries around uh, so uh, it's the it's also the makes a quite a lot of impact into the policy into the priorities and Kyrgyzstan is a developing country of course, uh, we the uh, government priorities first is social economic development, you know, and sometimes the environmental issues as we which we raised might be not the priority thing to do, but still we, we continue to, to, to continue it, like saying that why yes and why not, and then uh, why uh, it is important to, to keep this agenda. So. Um, uh, uh, and uh, maybe another also also obstacle is about the um, professional uh, professional um, community, you know, uh, because you know that uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was also high migrations. A lot of people left the country. Maybe there is not so many people working in the sector, etc. So sometimes we also feel the lack of expertise in some of the uh, some of the fields where. You know, where it could be the uh, like uh, more people where need to be the more people involved and we feel that also not only the uh, in the like private sector but also in the government sector and this is the also makes this uh, right quite a challenge because sometimes uh, people like uh, special in the government just change and then you can you have to come and then start over again and uh, this is also about the capacity building, so about the like, network building again, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, in general, yes, uh, uh, we also had an uh, um, issue regarding the uh, public awareness, you know, about the information. Because when we were starting working with the energy efficiency and green financing, we just find out that there is no like understanding about the like energy saving, energy saving measures, what is the green technology, why is needed. And second thing was about the financial literature, for example, about also the how to like really calculate your costs, making the like project um, pay, apply it to the bank. And also like even the 
collecting the invoices and other, other things. So this is the all the was the ob obstacles which we uh, met, and then we actually did try to solve in everyday um, everyday basis. Uh, and uh, but uh, what I uh, like pretty much in my work uh, is that uh, our people is uh, very um, acceptive. They learn fast, and they are very open. That was like really huge uh, for me experience when we started this energy efficiency programming for the individual houses, how people were open, you know, we like start doing it, we show the examples, we made the case studies, and then people just say that, yes, we want this. And this is the, actually, I think that great thing that we have um, actually the good ground and momentum to do the uh, uh, green activities. And I hope that uh, we will manage to do it. Oh, this is this is this is great. I'm uh, very happy to hear that. This is uh, fascinating. Uh, yeah, we got one more a question from Victor, and thank you again for for being here with us, Victor, and asking your questions and uh, participating, supporting. So uh, he says uh, the contribution uh, the contributions you're doing are really massive, and they require a huge amount of work considering those aspects. Could you tell about the role of cooperation with other organizations and the role of team? in uh, turning plans into a reality? And that's a great question, of course. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, people is the key component of the, all of our success, because uh, of course I cannot do it alone and I have a great team at Unison. So uh, uh, the professionals who's working for many years with me, and uh, uh, who uh, supportive um, and uh, trusted to my leadership. And I thank you all of them using this opportunity. Also, uh, within the uh, sector, uh, we have a uh, leadership and uh, I have also great support from other organizations. That's why we united and co found I was co-founding of the this association, Green Alliance of Kyrgyzstan, which unites, like I said, that uh, more than 60, uh, 60 independent organizations. And this organization, they are each on their own level doing the great job. And within the Green Alliance Association, we support each other, we empower each other, and we share experience. And then we come with the like a consolidated one opinion when we uh, uh, like uh, apply different um, regarding the different policies and strategies uh, opinion. And uh, that's I think that what we understand to, to need to do in order to have a one goal because one, our, our goal is about the sustainable development and prosperity of the Kyrgyzstan. And maybe this is the sounds very patriotic, but this is the really uh, the commitment to uh, what we have and what we feel and what we are doing this. Um, with the general, maybe from the like global perspective to the local, I mean that like uh, usually says that think globally, uh, locally. So this exactly maybe our uh, approach because we think that what is the global trends, where it's going, what is the like planet struggling, and how it can be actually the addressed also locally. And and this is the exactly the also issue for Kyrgyzstan about the as a developing country being sustainable in the future and leaving this uh, great nature we have in Kyrgyzstan for the future generations. So uh, that's why we we um, choose the green uh, economy as a subject for ourselves because we think that through the green economy, helping the government to greening it's our to greening it, uh, we can uh, contribute to the global trends, uh, global challenges, uh, solving the global challenges, and secondly, we can also do the good example for the region, maybe uh, in Central Asia. As a Kyrgyzstan is a country who is uh, having the, a lot of green activities on the economic uh, directions. All right. Yeah. Well, before we we wrap up, our uh, time is coming to the end. I just wanted to uh, add about. Uh, I know that you are supported by quite a few international organizations, right? Uh, international banks, uh, for example, EBRD, European Bank for Construction and Development. I know that you are one of their flagmen. Uh, you know, flagship uh, programs and your mm -hmm. organization is what that's what your organization is doing. Which other are, uh, international organizations uh, are you are you working with? And what would be your your message for them? Maybe perhaps 
asking them to do more or uh, do you need any, any more help from these organizations to advance your uh, ideas and your plans? Thank you, Victoria. This is a really great question. Um, yes, we're working with the EBRD. We work with the World Bank very actively also on the public buildings um, uh, energy efficiency. Uh, we work with the Swiss uh, Economic Cooperation Office. Uh, we work uh, with the USID, with the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, with the JZ, um, and uh, with um, many other <laughs> a lot of international organizations active in Kyrgyzstan. Because, uh, like you said, that one we are one of the weapon leader organization in the sector who's actually the, making the I think the leadership opinion in the topics of the climate change, clean energy and sustainable development. Um, and um, I'm very um, grateful for their uh, trust and partnership with us uh, because uh, be, uh, you know, thanks to their support uh, and uh, their um, uh, projects they have been implementing in Kyrgyzstan, we grow into the strong organization. And this was the, actually the very important part of the, uh, their contribution for the civil society and professional unions development in Kyrgyzstan. And um, uh, I think uh, uh, it's also very uh, important that in the locally, that they have a good professional local organization. So there will there shouldn't be the always maybe the uh, like um, consultants who comes and do the great job, but still they have to leave. Uh, but we are always here. We have this institutional memory, we have this capacity, and we have a great commitment to our country and uh, the job we want to do in the best way. So uh, maybe my message to our like partners and donor organization will be that uh, keep continuing supporting the local organization, making them more share of the consultancy job for the locals. And uh, also the uh, designing the projects in a way that there is a more local uh, participation and uh, also increasing of uh, building of their capacity. So the, the capacity stays and capacity also uh, like um, uh, enlarge and then can, can they can like build the next um, next uh, generation capacity and they can also share this uh, experience with them other colleagues and uh, uh, not only in the country but in the region and that's what i'm talking based on our own example of unison because um, uh, unison is the uh, like uh, well, on the beginning we said when we established we, we were like uh, ngo little ngo uh it was I, I i'm the founder alone and then i grow up a little bit with the volunteers and etc and nowadays we are an organization who has more than 25 employees and uh, offices in the regions. And, uh, and of course, a lot of other seasonal professionals who, who we involve from other countries as well. And every time I'm really very grateful that when we participate in that, some other regional projects also, and we have the opportunity to learn from other consultants and from other uh, at the uh, uh, like projects and experiences. Thank you so much, Norzat. Uh, Gulsum is thanking you for all the great information, for your great work. Uh, Anya is also thanking you for sharing your experience. It's truly amazing and very uh, inspirational. So yeah, it's, uh, it's great that you were able to join us and to talk about this. Thank you so much. I'm wishing you many more uh, successful years uh, with your organization, Unison Group. You know, 20 years is just the beginning. I'm sure you can do a lot more uh, in the coming another, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, with this, we will be will be wrapping up our conversation today about uh, green economy. Uh, green consulting in in central asia you can always see the updates for our future events on our website and here it is uh, posted i would like to actually make the announcement that uh, our next episode will be of course on july 1st uh, at the same time and our next guest speaker will be yelena yushkova who will be joining us from the ukraine 
Elena is a former president of CMC Ukraine, Ukrainian Association of Management Consultants, and she herself is an international consultant and business uh, coach uh, with uh, many years of experience. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much, Norzat, and we'll see you uh, in, in, in one month. Thank yes. you, and bye-bye to everybody. Thank you, Victoria. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.